Hello, this is the Provoke Braun here to show you how to set up and install the Samsung 9100 Pro NVMe SSD in your system. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up on your motherboard, how to install it into your PC, but also how to get Windows to recognize it, or alternatively, how to install Windows on it if it's the only drive in your system. So stick with me to find out all about it. Also, I'd recommend getting the heatsink version, and I'll show you why later on in the video. And for reference, I've installed this in the Be Quiet Lightbase 600LX, and I've tested it, and I'll show you how to do that later on in the video as well. But I would recommend the heatsink version, because it does get quite toasty. You'll need to make sure that you've got a motherboard that will support PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSDs, like this Gigabyte one that you can see here. It will work retrospectively with older motherboards, but you won't get maximum speed out of it. As you can see, this Gigabyte motherboard allows you to remove a large thermal heat shield from above on that first port. And that's usually where your Gen 5 drive would sit. But you might find that you can remove other heat shielding from lower down on the motherboard. And there are other ports down there as well. But it is worth checking because they're not often all Gen 5. You might find another port below this sort of heat shielding that you can use. And if you are going to use it, I would recommend using the heat shielding, removing the stickers from the thermal pads, and installing it properly because it will help with dissipating heat. Assuming, of course, that you're not using the heat shield version because as you'll see, that's too chunky to put in place and then to use one of these shields above it. The pre-installed heat sink is important though because it does make a difference to the temperatures and you do want to make sure that your drive is running at a good temperature because otherwise you'll find it thermal throttles and doesn't run at the correct speed. So I would recommend this version and obviously making sure that it's got good cooling in your case. You can see that it seats into the port pushes into the port and then usually is a little plastic clip to hold it in place. Sometimes you might need a screw for that and that's an M2 screw and I'll leave links in the description for spare screws if you need them. So I've set it up and installed it into my case now and I've got that running in there. Now I want to show you a couple of different options whether you're running with Windows already installed on a separate drive or installing Windows directly onto it. But first of all if we mash the delete key on the keyboard and go into the BIOS if you've done this correctly, you'll hopefully see the drive in the BIOS there. You can see the Samsung 9100 Pro listed in the peripherals part there. You might find that perhaps Windows doesn't recognize the drive though, and that could be down to the settings on the motherboard. So if you go into the settings, you should find options in there related to the PCIe version of that port. So you might want to change those. If you do happen to have Windows already though, I'm gonna quickly show you how to set up the drive and get it recognized because it might not pop up immediately you might find it isn't there now this clip is actually from a previous samsung drive but the logic is the same you'll see that the drive doesn't appear in there so what we want to do is hit the start key and then type disk we're looking for create and format hard disk partitions this is a disk management tool now hopefully when you launch this you should see the drive pop up it will be recognized as an additional drive in the system and then it appears in there what you'll need to do is to first to format this before it will be recognized in Windows Explorer. So right click and click new simple volume and then follow the steps here to format the drive, assign it a letter and then give it a label. Obviously I've labeled it as Samsung 990 Pro. That's because this is from a previous video, but don't worry about that. Just give it a name that makes sense to you. You can call it whatever you want, to be honest. And then you should find that it then pops up in Windows Explorer and you can then access it. And as I said, if you can't get to this stage, it's probably a BIOS setting that's holding you back. So you need to check the BIOS settings. If you don't have Windows already installed, but are instead using the drive as your Windows drive, then I'll show you how to install Windows on it as well. So the first step is to obviously get Windows ready to install, which means that you need to find a separate PC where you can download the creation tool. So the Windows Media Creation tool I'll leave a link to in the description, but you basically need to download the tool from the website and then you need a separate thumb drive in order to use that to create this creation media that you'll then plug into the new PC and then be able to use that to then install Windows on the new drive. So download it, run the application, go through the steps here and it should install onto your USB thumb drive, which you can then use quite easily to just plug in and run as I'll show you in a second. Obviously you need a separate machine for this though, so borrow a laptop if you can. I have done a separate video on how to use your phone to actually do this if you want to, so I'll link to that in the description. It's a little bit more complicated. If you can borrow another machine to do this, it'll make life a little bit easier. 
But run this tool, it takes a little while to run. You obviously need a clean drive in order to run it on there and one of a decent size as well. I've got a 32 gigabyte drive I use for it. Plug it into the back of your new machine and then turn it on and you should find that it then boots from that drive and then takes you into the Windows setup menu, which you can see here. So follow the steps, select your language, click to install, select Windows Home 11 from there and then click next. And then we want to accept that and click next again. And then you want custom install windows only. Now you might find that you have partitions on your drive or that it needs formatting for some reason. So if you have multiple partitions on the drive, delete those out, then create a new one and then basically go in through the steps of installing it on the large sector within this. That was something I had to do, but you might not have to do this. I just wanted to demonstrate how to do that. Then you should find that it starts copying the files and going through the rest of the installation process. It takes quite some time, but at some point you should find it then tells you that it's going to restart. At this point, I'd recommend then taking out that USB drive from the back of the motherboard because at this point, otherwise it will try and reboot from that and then take you back into the creation tool, which obviously you don't want. At the next stage, you might find that you get to this part where you can't connect to the internet to progress with the Windows installation. There are various different solutions to this that I've covered in a different video, but there is one pretty easy one. But the first of all, you do need to make sure that you've got Wi-Fi enabled. If you're using a motherboard with Wi-Fi anyway and you want to use Wi-Fi, then you need to make sure you're using the Wi-Fi antenna, as you can see here which plugs into the back of the motherboard and without it you won't have a good Wi-Fi signal but you might find it also doesn't work and that the Bluetooth on your motherboard doesn't work. It usually plugs in or screws in depending on your motherboard you might have a slightly different design but it's an antenna that sits on top of your PC or nearby to give you a better signal. If when that's plugged in you still don't have anything that you can do to install Windows and not to worry because I'll show you how to install the Wi-Fi drivers but an easier alternative might just be plugging in an Ethernet cable if you can do that. Plug that in and then hopefully that will be recognized and then you'll be able to go about installing the system more easily. So you can see you can do that and then just go through the steps to install there. However, if you want to, you can download the Wi-Fi drivers. Now you can do this on your phone, find a motherboard website on your phone, navigate over to the support pages for your particular motherboard, find the drivers, so you're looking for the Wi-Fi drivers obviously in this setup. So here you go into this area and we're looking for the Wi-Fi drivers, the WLAN Bluetooth and Wi-Fi 7 drivers in this instance, and then download them. Now using an Android phone, you can download these files and extract the application because it is an application that you'll need to run on the new computer in order to get it to work. So once the file's downloaded, open it up with Files by Google and then you should be able to extract it. So you'll see there's an option to extract this DCH setup exe on the phone. We don't want to run it on the phone, obviously, but what we're doing here is basically using the phone as a storage device. So with it on there and downloaded, what we want to do is then plug in a USB-C cable to the phone, and then USB-A into your PC. And then on the phone settings, you need to go into the phone settings and then navigate to the USB section. So search for USB preferences. And then what you want to do is basically set it into file transfer mode and then verify that you're doing it. And what you want to do then is basically to hit shift and F10 on your keyboard. And that will open up the command prompt window from there. There's a couple of different commands that you can put in, but what I like to do in this instance, the easiest thing to do is to type Explorer. The Explorer window will then pop up. So this is Windows Explorer, which allows you to navigate around and see your files. You can then click on this PC and then click through to find your phone, the internal storage, the download section, and then find the exe file that we've just downloaded and extracted. So you can see DCH setup exe file here. What we're doing is using the phone as a USB drive, essentially. So bypassing the need to go into a separate PC to download these Wi-Fi drivers. And then you'll be able to run these Wi-Fi drivers, install them onto your PC before you've even finished installing Windows. So that will then help with the process of connection to the Internet so you can log into a Microsoft account so you can then finish the installation process. 
Now, there is another option for this if you want to do it without installing your Wi-Fi drivers first, but this is the best one, I think, because it makes it easier to get Wi-Fi installed onto the system and then to carry on installing Windows and getting it running. Once that's done, all you've got to do is connect to your Wi-Fi and then log in. Another thing I'd recommend doing is making sure the drive's running at the right speed. There's a couple of tools for this that are both free. Hardware Info 64 is the first one of these. With this tool, you can check that the drive's in the system properly, but also click on the NVMe drives, click on that drive itself, and then you should see a few different things of interest. You want to check that the drive controller shows that it's PCIe X4 32 giga transfers a second. That shows you it's using the right number of lanes in there. This could be down to the bifurcation tables of your particular motherboard, but that's basically making sure that that's running correctly. And if you click there, you'll also see PCIe version. So it's Gen 5 version. So it's Gen 5 running at four lanes, which is what it should be. So this is correct. If you see it's Gen 4 or it's running at two lanes, for example, you might not get maximum speeds. You can then use Crystal Diskmark to run a test on it. So from Crystal Diskmark, which is another free download, you select 64 gigabytes, select the right drive, select it to run. And then what we're going to do is to then wait for this system to run and you can see from Task Manager that it's processing as well. So with Task Manager, you can actually see the speed of that. And what will happen is eventually this will run and it will show you the speed that you were getting during this. So you'll get the read-write speeds read out of it. I'm also using Hardware Info 64 to track the temperatures of it because it is worth monitoring the temp. Because one of the things I mentioned is that a Gen 5 drive can get particularly hot which is why it's important to use the heatsink model, but also to make sure you've got good cooling in your case. Obviously, this is a benchmarking tool. You're unlikely to be constantly using a drive like this. Generally speaking, you'll be transferring files back and forth. But I have experienced problems in the past with Gen 5 drives overheating. I've got a separate video on that, and that can lead to issues. And as you can see from the shots here, it does get quite toasty. So with Hardware Info 64, I ended up finding that it was getting pretty hot at the top end, well over 90 degrees C, which is not ideal. Despite this, you can see that we're getting the right read and write speeds out of it. So we've got 14,000 megabytes per second and 13,471. But we're looking at 94 degrees C maximum on the drive. Bear in mind that I was obviously recording with OBS and obviously running the benchmark. And this is the Windows drive as well. So we're doing a lot of things on here, but still at the top end, it got very, very hot. So this is why I wouldn't recommend using a Gen 5 drive without heatsink and also making sure you're using it in a system with Git Airflow. I wouldn't recommend trying to install one of these drives into a console or into a laptop or a really compact case. At least that's my recommendation anyway. Hopefully I'll give you some helpful insights into this drive, how to install it, test it and make sure it works properly. This has been the Provoke Pro. Don't forget to check out the links in the description to other related videos that you might find interesting or useful. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.